guys, SC Survival and Hunting here. Today we're taking a look at our part 15 out of 20 bug out bag series. This is our fire starting slash tender slash just fire section. A lot of fire stuff, a lot, a lot of good stuff and good material here. Uh, so first let me just get started with tender. I'll go ahead and try to knock that one out of the way pretty quick. We have right here some fat ladder. Awesome, really great stuff. We got this at camping spot somewhere. Anyway, we did have a video on that. Uh, we'll try to get that in the description. Uh, but tinder is very important for a fire. Not only do you need to be able to get your fire started, but you need to be able to sustain your fire. So tinder and kindling are very important. Now, I really prefer a fat lighter for my tinder and for my kindling. Uh, it's not as easy to start as other things, but it burns for a very long time and it's very easy to go find out in the woods. You just gotta know what you're looking for and it's really good stuff. What I have here is I have a nice big torch, a fat lighter. You can just light it right here and it will burn for an extremely long time. All right, so a quick comment real right here about a fat lighter. We'll do a video uh, next time we go out camping, uh, especially um, like on a hunting trip, I'll go on, I'll do this. Uh, I'll do a video of how to find a fat lighter and spot it because you mainly want to look for dead stumps that are raised up high off the ground or fallen logs. You just always want to check that. And uh, basically how fat lighter forms is that the pine resin and sap gets trapped into the wood and it becomes a resin and fuses basically into the wood grain and it smells fabulous and it burns hot and slow like if you like this it will light for a while that torch right there we call it a torch for a reason you could scrape that little bit of the inside light it and it will light for a long time another thing is, is you want to look for that color if we could hold it right there look for that real reddish orange kind of dark red purplish color in some cases so and fat lighter is by far my favorite tender. Yes. And so tender, uh, some other forms of tenders like cotton balls. I, I see a lot of other cool survival people on YouTube uh, go make uh, Vaseline soaked cotton balls. Those are great. What I did right here was I went and I took a straw, put Vaseline uh, soaked cotton balls on the inside and I sealed it off so I have what is called a fire straw. This is like a DIY project. If you wanted to do this it would probably cost you all of about 50 cents at most. I mean you know most people who have straw and cotton balls at their house. Vaseline is like I don't know like five bucks for a nice size little container. So you know it's good stuff. Uh, and then you know a lot of other tenders like a lot of natural products that you'd find out in the woods like pine cones, pine straw, dead grass, a lot of stuff like that. Uh, but with this fat lighter uh, cover, I'm just going to move this out of the way. We will show uh, at the end of this video us lighting some. Just kind of how that all works. Let me move on right here. What I have in this small little pouch, this is a great little pouch. I have a small Altoids tin here. Let me see if I can get all this stuff out. There we go. I have two lighters, a magnesium rod, and an Altoids tin, and a small little Coleman bag. These are great little fire starters, these big lighters. You know, they, they're great. They will never fail you. Even if they run out, the, the striker itself still works and it will still make sparks for you. It's just, it's, it's not gonna, it, it's gonna be harder to start a fire if it doesn't have gas in it. This is a nice little magnesium bar right here, ferrocene rod right here, and then the, I think this is magnesium on the back. Yeah, you, know, you can always shave this off. Inside of this Altoids tin is a bunch of shaved fat lighter. It's a bunch of small little shavings of wood. Oops. So this stuff really burns really good, really easily. You know, a lot of this dried, shaved stuff, it's really good material. 
I'm just going to light one on fire right quick. As you can see, that burned pretty good, really fast, just to sit that off the side, but you know, it's good stuff and it works. Now, another kit that I have here, this is what I call my primitive fire starting kit. One thing that I'm looking to add to this is a fire uh, flint and steel set, excuse me. Uh, but right now what I have is I have a nice, I think this cost me like $15, it was a $15 uh, ferrocene rod, magnesium bar at the bottom. This is a really good rod. It broke, so as you can see, I kind of have to, kind of have to super glue it back together. But it's really good. This is a good striker, and you can shave the magnesium off of the back. What I really like about this is that if needed, you can actually shave the handle off too. So that works really well for me. Also, in the bottom of it, of this uh, awesome leather pouch, I have some small little pieces of fat lighter. And again, these burn really good, really easily. It's a lot of good stuff. So that's just all that I keep in my primitive uh, fire starting kit for right now. All right, I just want to say a quick comment about the lighters. People are like, man, why would you do lighters, man? You're cheating up in the woods and all that. Well, one, I like lighters because they, if they're not wet and if they still have gas in them, they're going to start a fire with you every time no matter what you put on it. Even if it's wet, you can eventually dry it out the fire and still light it. That's why I approve it, I use it. Now with the flint and steel, I don't have any because I have tons of ferro rods and matches. That's what I have found to be the best choice for me. Yes, I know how to start a fire with the flint and steel and the charred cloth and the spark ender and you put in the bird's nests and stuff, but that has been a priority of mine to get. I prefer ferro rods and fat lighter. Now if you're one of those people that prefer a bird's nest with flint and steel, hey, that's cool. But with me, I like ferro rods and fat lighter. Okay, well now we're moving on to some more methods of fire starting. We have our matches right here. We have some different matches, uh, candles, some cotton twine, another fire starter. Uh, some, this is something else I'll get to later. This is some good stuff. And we got some batteries. So just to start out with, we have some Endure matches. Your survival matches, you know, just standard storm proof survival matches. There's about four different kinds of matches you can get. You have the storm proof, you have the wind proof, you have the waterproof, you have the strike anywhere, and then you have all the above. Well, actually, excuse me, there's six. You have all the above, and then you have your just plain matches. So what we have here in these small little bottles is we have some storm proof matches. Now these are not strike anywhere, so um, you know, sadly, you know, you can't go to a rock and try to strike a match. Also, on the back, it says these are NATO issued, so that's just another thing to throw in there. I'm just going to pop the top on them right here. So as you can see, you have all these matches, and there's a piece of cotton, and there's a small little cotton ball right here. This cotton ball is multi-purpose. Not only can you, can you use it to start a fire, but it, uh, it doesn't make any jingling on the matches, you know, whenever you're running around doing stuff. So it has a striker right here, then it has a striker on the bottom of these matches. Just to go pull one out here. On the top, you have the actual uh, uh, thing that's going to light whenever you strike it. This brown part in the middle is more your tinder, so that it burns longer, so that it doesn't burn in like three seconds when you light it. And then, you know, in the bottom is just your regular stick. So that's stormproof matches. All right, so now we're looking at a couple more fire starting options and the two items on the right, they're both considered tinder and the item all the way over to the left is considered the fire starter. So what I really like is for a good fire starter is this Zippo emergency fire starter that comes with tabs in the middle and see. Ah. Sorry guys, I was doing this uh, with my weak hand. Get those sparks good. And I think this is a great way to have a fire starter for your bug out bag. It's small, it works well. And again, if you run out of tinder, you can find other, other uh, forms of tinder in the woods. So you honestly, with this, you have myriad of uh, actual uses. 
in it for it to last. And then in the middle, you have the extra tender tabs for it, which uh, comes in the eight pack. You can get these off of Amazon. They're five bucks. The lighter, the fire starter was 15 bucks off of Amazon. And then these waterproof Coglin's fire sticks. They come in 12 packs and I have two of them. So um, I'll set them up right here. I like them because they're waterproof. They can get soaked and they'll still light a fire. These burn for quite a while. Uh, I would have to say they burn for about maybe the whole stick, maybe 10 minutes I would have to say. But you can break these into two, three pieces for each one. So that's why I like it. So again, these were other options for uh, fire starting and tinder. We just have two small little bottles of those. Now we have our Coleman waterproof matches. Now the difference between the stormproof and the waterproof, they basically do the same thing. Uh, as you can see here in the picture, they don't have any kind of tinder in the middle. That's about the only difference between them. Uh, so these, these are going to burn faster than your stormproof, but again, they both work just about the same. And again with the waterproof matches, the stormproof, if it's windy outside, it's not going to blow out. But the waterproof, if it's windy outside and there's enough of wind, it's going to blow the match out. That's the only other difference besides the tender part on there. Yeah. And, oh, excuse me, I forgot to go over the price. These, I think, were $3 for the two pack. This is like... Uh, I don't know, like a dollar or fifty, two dollars for like four boxes of these matches. These candles right here, they're like fifty cents a piece. We got some cotton twine that's not too expensive. Uh, this Bear Grylls uh, striker is like twenty bucks. This utility flame is like five dollars for a pack of four. And these are just standard batteries. You know, everybody has these lying around their house. So to start off with, this cotton twine. This is some good stuff. Not only can it be used as a fire starter, it's more tender, but you you know you can use it to go string out for its regular purpose or just for anything else you know around the camp. But it's good, uh, tender, good fire starter, so I like it. Now these candles are good because candles, once you light them, they burn for a long time, and you know they're giving off a good source of light other than a fire. So you know if you don't want to go have a actual fire, you know at your camp or whatever. These are great, you know, you can go put one in your tent or something. And also with the candles, what you can do is you can, of course, move the wick up. And after a while of burning, the wax starts melting. And what you can do with that wax, you can take regular matches and make them waterproof matches. To where they'll never get wet. You can leave them in a pond. All you do is roll them in there a little bit, make sure all the excess comes off, and let them dry on a paper plate. Yeah. And it works just fine. That, that's one of those uh, DIY things that we at SC Survival and Hunting like to do. So, And we'll uh, do a video of those eventually, just like with the battery fire starting and different things like that. So what we have here is this awesome Bear Grylls fire starter. You know, it's like 20 bucks at your local sporting goods store, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, this is really good. You know, it's, it lights re really well. I'm going to try to throw a couple sparks here. If I can get it. There we go. So you know, it it's good. You know, it throws good good many sparks. It it has a sealable, uh, you know, seal whenever you go push it closed. It has some signaling stuff on both sides, and then on the very top right here, I can get it open. There we go. It has a small little container where you can go put a small little cotton ball. You know, just some extra tinder. And it even comes with a whistle, really good whistle. Oh my goodness, I can't even get this close. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Okay, so that covers our Bear Grylls Fire Starter. Those are really good. I would suggest if you don't have one, go and pick those up. I really like them. So, uh, the last, uh, last two things here is batteries and utility flame. Now, this utility flame, uh, if you realize it or not, is actually used by the military. Basically, what you do is you take, is you tear it open up here at the top. I'm reading the back here. You squeeze out the gel and then you light the gel on fire. So in other words, it's kind of like napalm, <laughs> which, which is really cool. But you know, 
it's, it's like liquid, it's like this liquid gel type thing. You light it on fire and it burns really good. You know, it's good, you know, to go pour on a log or on your tinder, you know, that you might be trying to go start. And, you know, it goes and it lights out on fire, you know, much easier than, you know, just trying to light it with like matches or something. So again, this was like five bucks for like a pack of four. I think I got off and for a pack of two, my bad, okay. So it's five bucks for a pack of two. It's like ten bucks for four of them. So yeah, it's pretty good. And you can get it off of BudK.com. Okay, that was it. Okay. And last but not least, we have batteries. Now batteries are great. You know, they can be used for their regular purpose, or you can use uh, hacks, as I have heard the term come up very recently. Hacks. Um, you can make a fire starter out of them and we will have this in another video showing you how to go make fire starter out of just a plain double a battery and a piece of paper so uh, i think that basically covers everything of our fire starting section you know i don't think i'm mistaken but if i did just you know leave a comment down below and you know what you think you know what else we should go add to our bug out bags you know why you like this why you don't like it you know we always like to go hear the viewer input but again, this is all really good material. You gotta have fire starting in your bug out bag, otherwise you're screwed and you're gonna die because you're too cold. And that's just the hard truth of it. So I think that basically covers everything. Uh, thanks for watching our video, guys. We really hope you like it. Uh, just check out all of our other videos. And also, please go and check out our other channel, SC Survival and Hunting TV. Uh, I know we haven't been doing much work, definitely not a lot of videos up on there, but we hope to really get that channel off the ground pretty soon, again with the supporters' help. So guys, thanks for watching our video. Please uh, just like, comment, subscribe, and we'd like to hear from you. Thanks and bye.